everyone knows how important breastfeeding is and usually new moms have a lot of questions about it. That's why we included this Breastfeeding Basics video in our series to help with at-home newborn care. In our breastfeeding how-to video, we explain that moms should nurse their babies on demand every one and a half hours to three hours during the day. But what about night feedings? It is normal for babies to wake throughout the night for feedings. Remember that each baby is different. While some babies sleep longer during the night, others will wake wanting to be fed. It is not necessary to wake the baby at night unless your breasts are full or uncomfortable or if the baby fed infrequently during the day. Just keep in mind that there should not be more than a five hour interval at night even if the baby fed often during the day. Here are some guidelines for how often to nurse your baby. Offer your baby the breast whenever you see signs of hunger, such as smacking their lips, sucking motions, or sucking hands, or if they move toward your breast while being held. Remember that crying is a late sign of hunger. Watching for signs of hunger before the baby starts crying will help you and your baby have an easier time of breastfeeding. For the first few weeks, breastfed babies will feed 8 to 12 times within 24 hours, a minimum of 8 feedings to maintain good health and nutrition. Some infants are sleepy and need to be woken for feeding to maintain adequate weight. After the first 3 weeks, most babies will continue to feed on demand and may even need to feed more frequently during growth spurts. These usually happen at 10 days, 3 weeks, 6 weeks, 3 months, and 6 months. To new mothers, it feels sometimes like they are feeding all the time. As far as milk supply, here are some things to know. Milk supply is increased by greater frequency and duration of breastfeeding. The more you nurse, the more your milk supply will increase. Milk supply is also enhanced by maternal rest and relaxation. Moms need their rest, and it is a good idea to keep your visitors to a minimum so your breastfeeding routine is not interrupted. And keep in mind that milk supply is hindered by giving supplements or delaying feedings by using pacifiers. For nursing moms experiencing breast fullness, it is best to avoid long intervals over three hours between daytime feedings. Regular feedings will reduce fullness, but if you are uncomfortable, Apply warm compresses or use breast massage prior to feeding and apply cool compresses to reduce swelling for about 20 minutes after each feeding. Gel packs work well, just don't apply directly to the nipple or areola. Nipple care can help reduce soreness and improve breastfeeding. Remember that improper positioning at the breast is the major cause of nipple soreness. With clean hands, use some expressed breast milk on the nipple and around the areola after feeding. Breast milk has been shown to promote healing and suppleness. Avoid using creams, soap, or vitamin E. The only recommended topical preparation is a purified form of lanolin. These are called lansinol or purulin. Next, let's answer some of the frequently asked questions about breastfeeding. Question number one. How do I know if my baby is getting enough breast milk? There's no way to measure. You look for cues from the baby. The baby should seem content after nursing. There should be at least six wet diapers and a minimum of three bowel movements in 24 hours by the time your newborn has reached six days old. Also, after nursing, your breast should feel soft after feeding once your milk has come in. If not, contact your lactation consultant and discuss your concerns. Question two. What do I do if my baby isn't latching on properly? As you know, a proper latch on is crucial for breastfeeding. Remember that you may need to attempt the latch on as many as 10 to 20 times before being successful. Do your best not to become frustrated. Try to reposition the baby, making sure that the baby is positioned tummy to tummy and that the baby is on level with your breasts. If you need to break the seal, stick a clean finger between the baby's mouth and your breast. If you continue to have trouble, contact your lactation consultant for assistance. Question 3. What should I do when my baby falls asleep during breastfeedings? Yes, many babies do fall asleep, especially when they are very young. If it happens occasionally, it should not be a problem, but if the baby falls asleep often, 
and you feel the baby is not nursing enough, try to keep the baby awake by rubbing or massaging the baby. You can try changing positions or burping the baby or having the baby in only a diaper, skin to skin as you nurse. Sometimes talking to your baby or blowing on the baby's face will help. Question four, how important is it to keep a breastfeeding diary? Some new moms like to keep careful track of how their baby is doing. A breastfeeding diary can be a helpful tool a diary can help you see the routine your baby is developing and to know for sure if your baby has a minimum of eight feeds a day. The diary can be just a simple record keeping device. It doesn't have to be a long detailed explanation. The diary gives mothers peace of mind that feeding is going well, but also gives reasons to call the lactation consultant or doctor. Question five, should I be concerned if breastfeeding does not relieve breast fullness? Breast fullness or engorgement is a feelings mom describe as a swollen, hard to the touch breast that can be uncomfortable. Not all nursing moms experience breast fullness, but if after breastfeeding your breasts still feel this way, then you should look for signs that your baby is feeding properly. Wet or dirty diapers are one way and a content baby is another. If fullness continues to be a problem or if you have a fever or pain, contact your lactation specialist or doctor. Question six, I am worried about my baby's weight. How do I know she is doing well? Babies should regain their birth weight by two weeks and will double their birth weight by six months. Along the way, keep an eye on the infant feeding cues we mentioned earlier. Regular appointments for weight checks with a pediatrician or a mother's group is helpful. New moms should be aware of the available resources here at NYU Langone Medical Center. These include the Baby Warm Line, where you can leave a message and an expert will call you back. For a list of available lactation consultants, visit the Parent Education website. There are two weekly meetings for new mothers, a breastfeeding cafe and a new mother's group. Both groups offer encouragement, socialization, and information. Visit our website, nyubaby.org, or our Facebook page, NYU Baby, for more information about these groups or if you have any questions, please call. As we mentioned earlier, successful breastfeeding requires patience, devotion, and a loving approach. We hope this at-home newborn care video has helped. If you liked this breastfeeding basics video, look for the breastfeeding how-to video for more information.